Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy BD, and welcome back to the Horror Tavern. Make sure to take a seat and grab a drink, because we are going to be exploring the limitless cavern that is the horror genre. Now, this is a very important video on my channel. The reason being because I review horror. I review horror movies, I review horror books, I read horror short stories, I read creepypastas, I basically consume a lot of horror media. And on my channel, I rebranded it as the Horror Tavern. I used to make all my videos on Goosebumps. I used to make it all on kids horror knockoffs. And then eventually I worked my way up that I wanted my channel to be a one-stop shop um, for all things horror. And I like the way it's turned out now. So I've rebranded as the Horror Tavern. And the reason why this video is important because I'm gonna be talking about the very beginning to my journey in horror. This book that I'm gonna be talking about today and a series as well, is a series that basically caused me to become a giant horror fan. It's one of the very first books that sparked my curiosity and has basically led me to this point. I have always been a big horror fan. I used to collect a bunch of different books, read them. I used to watch a lot of horror movies. I usually, you know, I like to watch um, horror TV shows and review them, as you know. But even outside of that, I watch YouTube channels like Mr. Nightmare. Um, you know, Mr. Nightmare, um, spooks or something i think it's called something spooks there's a lot of youtube channels that do like three scary true walmart horror stories three scary true food delivery horror stories the, the food delivery horror stories are always the scariest by the way either the home alone and the food delivery horror stories are always the scariest if you want to look out for some good videos and those videos you know obviously that they, they're not all true you know they people just send in stories and you don't know if they're true or not they could they could not be kind of like what a you know urban legend is um but I like them. I just like consuming a lot of different stuff that's horror. Another series that I've been watching recently is like um, The Watcher, which their channel's under a lot of flack because they made some poor poor business decisions. Um, but they have a channel called uh, Are You Scared? And that's a, a series where they basically get sent in stories by like either like upcoming authors or some of their fans that watch the channel. And then they'll have an artist make illustrations telling the story. And then you'll get some like interrupting commentary between, you know, Shane and uh, Ryan Bergara. Um, pretty funny. A good, 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 good segment of the show. Um, so I just consume a lot of different horror stuff. Um, and as I say that, you know, I got Mary Shelley's Frankenstein uh, here in front of me. Right next to me, actually, that I used in a little skit yesterday in a, in one of my videos. But Mary Shelley's Frankenstein right here. I had to read this for literature class in college, so I was very happy that I got to read Frankenstein. Although, when we get to that review, it might be controversial. But without dragging this on too long, I'm a horror fan. This book that I'm going to be talking about today is essentially the book that started it all. The book that sparked the fire. And there's three things in this world that have opened up my eyes to some of the great things for entertainment that are available. First is when I found out that Serena Vincent from Power Rangers Lost Galaxy starred in some nude roles and nude sex scene roles in movies. That's a moment in your life that turns boys to men. Um, another one was finding out that there are places that serve funnel cake with vanilla ice cream and either strawberry, chocolate, or caramel drizzle over it. That changed the game. And then it was the day that I picked up Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz, artwork done by Stephen Gamel from my elementary school library, and I brought it home to read. Now, when I was in second grade, my mom, uh, this was a couple of years after my parents got divorced, and my mom basically was going out of her way to find a bunch of different babysitters. Babysitters cost money. Um, and what ended up happening was she realized that I get back home from school at like 3 o'clock or something, 3 p.m. She gets back home from work at like 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m., whatever. So there's no real reason for her to pay for a babysitter for me, especially since I'm in second grade. All I have to do is like just walk to my house from the bus stop, which is like very, very close. And then just get in the house. I can let myself in, um, which she used to give me a key in my backpack. Um, and that key I used to get into the house with. And I would just stay in the house for a couple hours and then she'll be, cause if she's gonna come back in a couple hours, you know, she just told me, you know, don't, don't, don't open the door for anybody, you know, no strangers, just stay to yourself, make sure the curtains are all drawn, make sure doors are locked. That's all she would say. Um, so that's kind of what I stuck to. Um, however, what ended up happening was I picked up scary stories to tell in the dark during the winter. And during the winter, the house gets dark very quickly. And I had a habit as a kid Maybe it was because I was paranoid 
and I would try to have um, like fits of bravery and stuff. When you got into my house, uh, there's a light immediately by the door that you can turn on so that way it lights up the kind of opening den before you get into the living room. But my bedroom was all the way at the end of the hallway so it's pitch black, pitch dark. And of course in the mind of a paranoid boy, it's a dangerous place for you. So in order to show that I was brave, I thought that by keeping my jacket on, that shit was like juggernaut armor against anything that could be in the house. So I would walk straight to the end of the bedroom, go into my bedroom, turn on the light, and then I would breathe because I felt like I did something really brave. I was that type of paranoid, very imaginative kid. I was an imaginative kid since I was young, still imaginative now. I love writing. I love, you know, daydreaming. I'm one of those type of guys. Um, but that just shows you the kind of kid I was. So when I brought home this book, I brought it home because I saw the cover. I had, it said scary stories to tell in the dark. So I'm like, all right, let me bring it in. So I went into the house. I turned on the, the, the opening den light by the door. And then I kept all the other lights off. So this is the ritual I did where I would go to my room, flick off the light, you know, on the light. And then I would walk through the house and turn on all the lights just as like a fit of bravery. I decided, you know, I brought home this book. I want to read it. I want to get immersed. So I would keep all those lights off and I would just keep the door, the light in front of the door on. And that way that would be enough light for me to read on the couch in the living room. And, you know, then I could just immerse myself. It would be dark enough. Uh, it would be light enough that I could read it, but dark enough that I would get scared. And I started reading the book, and I had sleepless nights for a long time. Uh, this book, Scary Stories of Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz, retells a lot of famous urban legends that you may have heard of, um, or retells some stories that he's heard across his you know, wide career of just looking at different urban legends and folk tales. And the inspiration behind making this book was the idea that across all different parts of society, across all different parts of eras and periods of time, humans have always had a habit of telling scary stories, um, whether it be around a campfire, whether it be to some peers in your house, whether it be, you know, while you're walking down the road with your friend, you want to tell them a story. People love passing down these urban legend, scary stories, scaring people. It's a natural habit. People love doing it. And he decided to make a book basically about that. And he hired Stephen Gamel to do the artwork. And Stephen Gamel's artwork enhances this book by tenfold. His artwork is so terrifying. It's so scary. The artwork in this book is straight nightmare fuel. It's this sketch art, charcoal, gray, blacks, white. And it just looks horrifying. The way he draws, it's like realistic, but it's also disturbing and dark. You'll see when you look it up. Just look up. Some of the imagery in this book is on my thumbnail, so you can see that. The One of the main pictures of the girl is from a short story called The Haunted House. And it's storming outside with thunder. So great setting for this video while it's dark in my room. Um, so yeah, this is like, um, it's just a great great artwork, great book retelling of all these different urban legends. And it works extremely well. Um, so let's talk about the book actually, because a lot of you may have read this book, but there's probably some people out there who have not read this book that may or may not stumble upon this video either now or in the near future. God willing, God bless if this YouTube channel keeps growing exponentially, uh, fingers crossed and prayers for that. Uh, and this book, you know, since it tells about urban legends, let's talk about some of the stories, some of the ones that I really enjoyed. And again, I'll talk about some of the artwork as well that comes with these stories. So the first big story in this book is called uh, the, the Toe, or the Big Toe, I believe. It's about this boy who's basically out, I think, by a graveyard. He's digging around, and um, he's kind of trying to find things, and he finds this toe, this big toe sticking out of the dirt and soil, and he decides to uh, basically rip it off and take it home uh, and eat it for supper because his family's poor. Um, he kind of wants um, them to have some food. This is a good way for him to kind of forage and get something brings it home. He doesn't really check where that toe is attached to or whatever. And when he serves it in the stew, you know, mom puts it in, makes it, they all eat it. Disgusting. But then he goes to bed that night and uh, he hears something. He hears something calling out to him from outside. And he hears something uh, basically shout, essentially, basically shout at him um, that, you know, where is my toe where is my toe you know and it starts going into the room with him and you know he, he realizes oh shit the toe that i stole belonged to something truly horrifying truly terrifying 
I am in a lot of shit right now. And yeah, that's how basically the story ends up. It ends up being quite scary, quite terrifying um, when you find out what exactly came to get back that toe. And there's an alternate ending as well that I think is even creepier that deals with this thing maybe or maybe not coming down the chimney. Ooh, creepy. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good story. That's the opening story of this book. Another story in here that's really good um, is called The Wendigo. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because I made a separate video on my YouTube channel. Go check out the playlist. That's the best things that I've read or watched. I have a story about, I have a video about the Wendigo on there. Wendigo is about this hunter, this wealthy hunter that goes out um, during the winter into a forest to hunt. He brings along a Native American that can help guide him through the paths and find good hunting grounds. And then one day when they're sleeping, uh, the wind starts picking up during this forest. He opens up the tent and he basically hears that the wind sounds like it's calling the name of this Native American. And when he opens up, you know, the tent flap and looks outside, none of the trees are moving. So where the hell is the wind coming from? The trees aren't moving at all. They're still as a rock, you know? And that story gets wild and crazy. It gets pretty disturbing. Um, another story in here is called The Thing. This story has specifically fucked with me for a long time because it's about these guys that are, I think, walking down the road. It's dark outside at night and they're by a cornfield, and they see this thing crawl out of the cornfield, and it gets up, stands up like a human, walks halfway into the road, then walks back into the cornfield, and then it comes back out and walks towards them. It's got on black pants, it's got a white shirt, it's got black suspenders, and it looks like a rotting corpse. It looks like a skeletal, rotting creature corpse. The artwork of this thing is basically just a rotting face with a few strands of hair, and just smiling like no lips big grin forced wide eyes no eyelids you know that kind of thing it walks up to one of the guys he gets scared they all run away and then there's a twist at the end of the story that is a uh, pretty morbid pretty dark all things considered um may or may not deal with fears of the future something like that and foreshadowing it's a good foreshadowing horror story uh so that one is to the point and good um let me think about some of the other stories in here oh uh, one of them that's extremely terrifying is called What Do You Come For? What You Come For is about this woman that's alone in her apartment or house or something and she hears something coming down the chimney and uh, these two rotting feet fall down and she's like, what the fuck? What is this? And then next thing you know, uh, a pair of rotting legs falls down and they connect to the feet and then the torso comes down, rotting torso connects to the feet, arms come down, rotting arms connect to the torso and then you know, then the head comes down, old man's head and connects to it. And then this uh, old man starts violently dancing around the apartment. That is so fucking scary. It is so horrifying of a visual of a story. Just the idea of these dead rotting body parts of something falling down the chimney and then merging and connecting together in this one jangly man, which I think was adapted into the movie, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. They, they named him the jangly man. That thing was terrifying. This thing is terrifying. And uh, yeah, the, the way that story ends, even though it kind of ends on that sort of jump scare kind of thing that Alvin Schwartz does in some of the like first several stories, it's a very creepy visual. Another story that uh, is quite good that I, that was actually in the funny story section, but I think it's quite disturbing, even though it is funny. Um, it's called Wait Till Martin Comes. Wait Till Martin Comes is about this guy who's basically stranded out in the middle of a storm storm's going on now gets stranded out in the dark gets stranded out in the middle of a storm and he finds this abandoned kind of house or place that he thinks he can find shelter in by the woods um so he goes into this house sits down starts up a fire kind of lays down on the couch and relaxes and then he goes to sleep takes a nap and then he wakes up and he looks over and he sees a black cat purring at him so he's like all right there's a cat in here i, I don't know why the owner would leave behind a cat I'm just gonna make my shelter and maybe I can wait till this owner comes back and just let him know what happened because I can't be out there in the storm. So he goes back, takes a nap and he wakes up and he sees another black cat. But this black cat is significantly larger. This black cat is the size of a wolf. It's a wolf sized black cat and it's sitting right next to the other black cat. And then it starts talking and it goes, should we do it now? And then the little black cat goes, yeah, let's wait till Martin comes. And he's like, what the fuck? And he's like, all right, you know what? I I must be exhausted. I must be imagining things. It's just some weird bad dream. I drift off. Maybe I'll wake up from it. Goes back to sleep, wakes up. There's a third cat. 
it's the size of a tiger. And then it asks the other two cats, should we wait till Martin comes? And they're like, uh, or no, it says, uh, should we do it now? It continues on the trend. Should we do it now? And they go, nah, let's wait till Martin comes. And, and then the ending of the story, uh, even though it's a little bit comedic, um, it was very effective. That story, the visual of that is so horrifying, you guys. It's so terrifying. I hate, I love animals, but animals in the dark are horrifying. The idea of going into this abandoned house and there not being some killer in there, there not being some stranger or horrific abomination in there, no, just some cats that progressively keep getting larger and larger and they talk. That is horrifying as shit. I don't care if it's a comedic story. It's horrifying, dude. Um, another story in here that's actually on the thumbnail of this, um, of this video is called The Haunted House. The Haunted House is about this priest that goes to, I think, exercise a house that he's ordered to. Um, he kind of lays there, makes a fire, adjusts himself, uh, opens up his Bible, starts reading it. And next thing you know, he starts hearing these footsteps coming up the cellar. And he goes down to the cellar, uh, right in front of the door. Here's the footsteps going up. He hears the doorknob turn. And then he goes, you know, what do you want? And then all of a sudden the door shuts. And nothing comes out. And eventually he kind of waits it out and sees what happens. And he eventually then does wait for this uh, thing to come out. And it turns out to be this uh, decrepit looking girl. She's got no, no skin on her lips. You know, her teeth are exposed. She's got wiry, long black hair. And she has no eyeballs. It's just a bunch of flesh gaping sockets. And she explains something that happened to her. And the priest is then put into a situation that he has to solve. Um, it's a very good story, very effective, very creepy. It's got some bittersweet elements to it, but the way that story ends off is uh, quite good. And uh, yeah, those are all really the stories that stood out to me. There's a few other ones in there, but I don't want to give everything away. You guys should go ahead and read this book. It's a very easy read. It's like a hundred and not even a hundred, but I think it's like a, under a hundred pages. Um, and it's again, very short stories. The artwork in here by Stephen Gamel is amazing. Um, they're urban legends. They're to the point. They're creepy. I didn't talk about it, but you get some realistic urban legends too, like The Hook and The Babysitter, which if you've seen movies like When a Stranger Calls, you know where that's from stories like high beams a lot of good stuff in here um and i love the entire trilogy i think the second book might be my favorite and then i forgot i always forget a lot about the third book but this entire trilogy of books is amazing please go pick up the entire trilogy and go read them if you can um and yeah man it, it's amazing and go watch the movie while you're at it i watched the movie uh i don't want to talk too much detail about it but i quite enjoy that movie it's a really good movie um well done and i enjoy it um so yeah Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is the most influential book in my time. It's what started my love for horror. And I would not be here today if it was not for Stephen Gamel and for Alvin Schwartz.